I am once again joined by Mike Axelrod, who is a licensed psychologist, a nationally certified school psychologist. He is the Director of Human Development at the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire and has 20 years of experience working with families through all different kinds of fun Mm -hmm. adolescent and kiddo stuff. Yeah. Um, So, Mike, thanks again Mm -hmm. for joining me today. You're welcome. Today, in comparison to our last conversation where we were talking about discipline, Mm -hmm. today we're going to talk about a concept that you call time in, which I just Mm -hmm. love the idea of. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Could you tell us a little bit about sort of the underlying thought behind this time in concept? Right. So time in is essentially uh, time that a parent and child or an adolescent spend together um, and they're they're interacting with one another. So it's not just... um, uh, maybe focused on something like homework or um, driving them to sports, although time in can occur during those, sure. those periods. But it's time where the parent focuses his or her uh, attention on the, the child. Um, and what we find in research is that the more a family or the more a parent-child relationship can have time in, the more effective the parent is going to be in terms of parenting. Mm -hmm. And we also find that, uh, this goes back to our previous conversation, the more time in we can have with a child, the more effective our discipline is going to be. So actually what we're looking for is for every one uh, disciplinary interaction, we're looking for uh, four times of that in terms of time in. Sure. So uh, that's really what time is and how it's uh, effective in the context of parenting. Okay. So as a parent of kids mm-hmm. who are in a you know, little bit of a different age group, right. I have just, un- <clears throat> just out of toddlerhood, sure. but mm-hmm. now my oldest is you know, preteen right, age. Right. So this experience definitely does change over mm-hmm. time, at least in my mm-hmm. experience. Is, mm-hmm. is that common in families? Absolutely. So when we think of time in for younger children, it's mostly time on the floor. Sure. Playing with toys. Um, interacting in, in that capacity. But as kids get older, preteens into the teenage years, it certainly shifts. And so what we might see time in look like, it would, might be more conversational. Okay. So talking about things that are of interest to the adolescent. And I don't mean conversational in terms of trying to find out how they're doing in school. Sure. I mean like having a conversation about the Green Bay Packers or you know what what they did what how the ski trip was and they, sure. what, you know what 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 um, certain trails did they go down yeah. and, and those kinds of things more of the nuances it, exactly okay. exactly so it, so it looks when we talk about teenagers it does become more conversational but it can also be very activity based okay so playing games with kids right and we oftentimes think about that with younger kids but older kids like to play board games they yeah. like even video games although i like to limit the amount of time in that we uh, do with video games, sure. but still interacting with kids in terms of their interests and hobbies and the things that they like to do every day. Okay. What are the main components, would you say, of clocking this time mm-hmm. in? Mm-hmm. Well, the first is that, again, it should be um, interactive. Okay. Second, I think it's important to separate time in from the other responsibilities and roles that we play as parents with kids where we're asking them about things or we're teaching them okay. or we're supervising their homework. That's not time in. And sure. Time in should be, again, focused on the things the kid likes to do. Okay. So that would be sort of the second piece. I think the third piece is making sure that you, as the parent, are totally engaged and attentive with your kid. Okay. And it's not uncommon for... Uh, I, parents often say, well, we have these conversations when we're driving. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, are you totally focused in on your kid during that time? Mm-hmm. Or are you thinking about what you're going to do when you drop your kid off at school sure. afterward, like all the different chores and responsibilities right. you have. And so that's something that we have to, we have to be cautious about because kids pick up very quickly when we are not fully attending to them. Yes, for sure. Um, you use a, or you've talked about a couple of different strategies for mm-hmm. not only the 
talking mm-hmm. interaction, but other types of interaction right. that mm-hmm. we might exchange. Mm-hmm. Can you talk us through some of sure. that? Yeah. Uh, research has actually found that uh, the par- parents' use of physical touch can be very effective in terms of, again, nurturing that parent-child relationship. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, physical touch, usually I recommend it when we're acknowledging kids, for example. So okay. when, we're, when we're saying, the, telling them, acknowledging them, uh, for something good they did, you can like rub their hair, right? You can pat them on the back and give it with teenagers. I usually give sort of a, a an elbow to <laughs> yeah. the shoulder. Um, as my son has gotten bigger and stronger, it's not as easy to move him, but, yeah. but that kind of thing, um, the, the, the wrestling that occurs between parents and kids, particularly dads and, and sons, yeah. um, that kind of stuff is all very good and, okay. and very valuable. It doesn't have to be hugs. I think that's, one of the things I try to stress to people sure. is that you don't have to hug your kid. Yeah. You know, you can you can put your arm on around their shoulder. You can pat them on the back. You can give them a high five or a fist pump. Those kinds of things. Yeah. <clears throat> there, there again. There's lots of research that suggests that that can be a very powerful piece to a positive parent-child relationship. Yeah. Just since you introduced this mm-hmm. topic to me, um, I've sort of been utilizing it mm-hmm. more in my own home. And with my 11-year-old, it's really interesting how quickly the dynamic yes. between the two of us shifts mm-hmm. when, let's say he comes home from practice, he's just kind of sitting in the chair mm-hmm. hanging out. Mm-hmm. He's being quiet. Mm-hmm. He's just sort of relaxing. I'll go over and kind of <clears throat> either give him a high mm-hmm. five or a mm-hmm. pat on the back. or, And it's amazing how just that yeah. one tiny action mm-hmm. not only reciprocates a certain amount of love and care. Sure, and, sure but also just changes the right. flow mm-hmm. between the two of us. Mm-hmm. So I love that it doesn't have to be this huge monumental Absolutely. action. I mean, it's really tiny and it requires almost no right. thought. Right. So it's really been yeah. interesting to watch it unfold. Yeah, that's a really good example of where I think one of the things that we have to do more of as parents is pay attention to our kids when they are doing things that we, we like. Yeah. Again, it's a lot of times what happens, particularly as kids start to engage in more and more inappropriate behaviors, that becomes the focal point of the relationship. And mm-hmm. so, you know, what you're describing is really shifting to let's focus as much energy and attention on stuff we like, mm-hmm. which is a, a kid just sitting. Deep, you know, Pleasantly. yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> just relaxing. And, yeah, I mean that we like that, and yeah. so reaching out and again using physical touch. You can certainly use a verbal acknowledgement, mm-hmm. right? You can you can say great job or thanks for doing that. But yeah. physical touch, particularly in an intimate relationship, it, it says something more. Yeah, so interesting. Mm-hmm. And I think this point you have of that <clears throat> really, as a parent, we have not only the job of teaching our kids what we don't want them to do, right. which is sort of that discipline piece, but teaching them what we do want. Mm-hmm. And these strategies really hone in right. on that, which I think is so interesting. Absolutely. Four to one. Yeah. Four acknowledgements for every one disciplinary interaction. So for, for your average kid, that may mean you have to acknowledge your kid, I don't know, 20, 25 times. Sure. If there are three, four, five disciplinary interactions again not big things yeah, little things but yeah little but but yeah. that means you, you you know you have to sort of focus a lot of time and energy on the acknowledgments and that's why physical touch is very easy to do yeah this has also been an interesting experience because my oldest is quite a rule follower i mm-hmm. mean he's super mm-hmm. responsible he's a respectful kid so there as he's gotten older there's been less really need yeah for a lot of verbal, you right. know, redirection and right. that kind of thing. So this is such a nice strategy just to keep us sure. connected in a quieter, simple sure. way. Mm-hmm. Just because he's a good kiddo right, and right. is hanging out and being kind to his siblings or whatever. Absolutely. He deserves attention for that. And as you're saying, you know, reaching out and acknowledging him for doing those things that are pretty typical in your house but but are still worth pointing out to him yeah and i think that's really important for us to do yeah i i remember you know working in a, in a workplace setting where um I, I was really good about getting paperwork done on time and that was just an expectation and the boss who i think had to go out and you know rattle cages to get people to get their paperwork done on time 
used to come into my office once a month and just thank me. Sure. You know, thanks a lot for, for being the one person that I don't have to come <laughs> yeah. and shake my fist at. And yeah. that felt good, you know. And yeah, and yeah okay, it was, a, it was an expectation. Right. But it still made me feel good. It made me feel like a very important part of the team. Yeah. That he would acknowledge me for that. And I think in a family, in order to make our kids feel like they're important members of the family, we've got to acknowledge them. And sometimes we have to acknowledge them for things that are not so, at this point in time, extraordinary. Sure. Things that have been put into this category of expectation. Yeah, but are appreciated nonetheless. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It makes our life a lot better. When yeah, a lot easier. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. One thing you suggest that I think is so smart mm-hmm. is um, using parent child activities mm-hmm. as sort of the reward mm-hmm. for these good yeah. behaviors mm-hmm. and the time in. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of take yeah. us through that? Yeah, so one thing we have to be careful about is, first of all, not <clears throat> making all of our interactions with kids contingent on their good behavior. Mm-hmm. You know, we just, we just have to interact with them in positive ways. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but occasionally what we can do is, especially if we're, we want to do something a little bit special mm-hmm. with a kid, we can tie it into a behavior that they've been engaging in that we want to either see more of or we just, as we've been talking about, want to acknowledge. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> if I'm going to take my son to the science center, right, and it's something that we've even been planning, sure. I can say to him, you know what, you've been really good the last couple of days about X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's been really neat to, to get very positive reports from your teacher about your behavior in school. That's one of the reasons why we're going to the Science Center. Yeah. So, so tying it in there. You know, a lot of families go out to eat. You know, why not just draw a connection between going out to eat and something that your kid did yeah, positive, with, within the yeah. last couple of days, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, you've been re- you, you know, the two of you have been really kind to one another, talking to, a, to, to you know, a sibling, to yeah. siblings, right? The two of you have been, re- been really kind to, to, you know, to one another. We're going to go out for dinner to celebrate that. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't have to tell them that you were already planning to go out sure. for dinner anyway, right? right? But you, you're, what you're doing is you're drawing a relationship between appropriate behavior and something good. Mm-hmm. And we just have to draw those connections for kids as much as we can yeah. over time. And do you see using that, the parent-child activity kind of reward system, um, for other, like, learning activities? Like, right now, Mm -hmm. we are working with my one guy on cultivating kindness. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he's trying to earn a date with Mm -hmm. one of us by being kind to his sister, Mm -hmm. which has been challenging for him lately. Are those... Are those also scenarios mm-hmm. where you see using that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think that's really, that's again, pointing out that there are connections that need to be drawn between the behaviors that we want to see as parents, which in this case is being kind to your sister, mm-hmm. and some of the positive outcomes that can happen when you are kind to your sister. Sure. Right? Um, but I think we also have to be careful about making all of our interactions with kids contingent on sure. those kinds of things. Right. And so uh, this would be something above and beyond what's very common in terms of the things you do with your son, for example. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's very good. All right. So we're going to be clocking our time in. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. One time day at a time. I love it. Time in. Great. Great. Thank you so much. You're I appreciate welcome. it. Yeah.